on. Hey, good morning, everybody. Good morning. You know, let's start off with prayer as we pray for those that are going in for surgery, for those that are out sick today, for those that are battling sickness, for those that have walked away and fell asleep, for those that haven't accepted Christ. Let's lift them all up in prayer and let's believe in faith, one mindset, that God is moving on each and every request, that he's already heard our prayers, that he's answering our prayers, that he goes before us to yeah. touch, to heal, to renew, and to revive. Amen. Lord, we pray revival this day, Lord, as you touch each and every one of us. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we love you. We praise you, Lord. Father, we lift up those that have sickness and disease. Lord, I thank you. I thank you that they're healed. They're set free in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for healing them, touching them, and setting them free. Pray for those that are going for surgery, Lord, that are having medical procedures. Lord, I lift them up, Father, touch the doctors, touch the nurses. But, Father, most of all, let your spirit flow through their body from the top of their head to the bottom of their feet. Father, reassure them, and, Father, let them know that it is done. They're healed and set free. Lord, we pray for those that have walked away, Lord, those that have fallen asleep, those that are, Father, causing division in the church. Father, we lift them up. And we pray for them. I pray you touch them, Lord. I pray your spirit, Father, bring forth a conviction upon them, Lord, that they will change their ways. They will turn, repent, and come back to you. And, Lord, Father, we lift up all that we know that haven't accepted you. We pray for them, Father. We do. We cry out to you, Lord, that, Father, the spirit of God will go through the windows, the doors, the roof, Father, and just touch them, Lord. Father, let there be a drawer upon their lives, Lord, where they see that they need Jesus, that they need you, Lord. They need to cry out to you. They need your touch. They need your blessing. Father, thank you, Father, for bringing, Father, the harvest. Oh, Lord, I thank you for the harvest, Lord, that you will bring them, Father, to receive, accept you, and to serve you. Lord, we thank you and praise you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is so wonderful, isn't he? Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Kathy, are you ready? Where is she? I guess she's not ready. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But as we as we get going this morning, we get we get going in one mindset. And, and yeah. all through the week God has been saying, is your focus on me? Do you have that connection? Are you are you listening? Are you following? Are you reading my word? Are you studying? Are you praying? And we all need to be there. Amen? So just one of us being there is not acceptable. We all have to be in one mindset. Focus on Jesus. Walking with Jesus. Amen? So as we begin praise and worship, let's just praise Him and give Him glory this morning. Amen? Amen. I have a question for everyone this morning. We walk as Christians in a world that is totally against us and we don't even know it. Sometimes we are walking in a way we don't understand. But do you realize that God wants to set you free from yourself? There are sins in our lives we commit each and every day that we are unaware we're sinning. When we doubt God, that is a sin. Do you know what God said? You are rich. Do you know what God said? You are healed. Do you know what God said? You are free.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Have you ever walked around the sanctuary? Have you ever prayed over the pews? Have you ever came and knelt down before the Lord or laid prostrate before the Lord and said, Lord, Lord, we need you. Hallelujah, we need you. We're going to have communion. Can I get Drew and Kim to come up, please? Thank you, Lord. You may be seated for a moment. We're going to have communion. I was reading in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11 this morning as Jesus talks, as he, they talk about communion and the disciples around the table and Jesus breaking the bread and giving out the wine. And you know, we, I don't think we go that far in the scripture to where we look at it truly, look at it, of what God was saying in our mindset as we, as we look at what God is saying to each of us. And I'm going to jump this morning and kind of part of the message, part of the part of the teaching, I'm going to jump to 27. So normally I read like 23 to 26, but I want to start in 27. It says, Wherefore, wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. What is that talking about? It's talking about do you hold on to forgiveness? Do you have odd against your brother or sister? Are you coming to church for some other reason than worshiping and praising God? But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he who eats and drinks unworthily eats and drinks damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. As we look at God's word, I pray for forgiveness. I do. I pray God forgive me if I've sinned or I've walked in a direction that is unworthy of you. I pray if I hold unforgiveness towards anyone, Lord. I pray, Father, that they forgive me, but I pray you forgive me also, Lord. I ask you to touch everyone here, Lord, and those that are watching. This is an important time in our life because the Lord is coming soon to take us home. I just pray that everybody has listened to what I said. And do an examination, a spiritual examination of your walk in Christ. Father, I ask you, Father, to bless the communion as we take communion this morning, Father. That, Father, it represents your blood and your body. It's a new covenant, Father. We, we as born-again Christians, we've given our life to you, Lord. We've, we've given it all. Father, I ask you, Father, to bless the communion as we pass out this juice and as we pass out this bread we ask you for your blessing and your anointing lord father in jesus mighty name thank you lord thank you jesus
Corinthians chapter 11, verse 28. It says, But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of this bread and drink of this cup. Spiritual examination, to me at least, is almost a daily thing. I have to go before the Lord and say, Lord, where am I? What am I doing? Am I serving you 100%? We all need to do that spiritual examination as we, as we go through communion. We go through communion in in, in our in, in our commitment to God, believing that He died on the cross for us, that He shed His blood for us. First Corinthians chapter eleven, starting at verse twenty-three. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which He was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Let's take up the bread. Verse 25, after the same man also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do you as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let's take up the juice. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord. Father, I just come to you, Lord. Humbly come to you, Lord. Father, giving my whole, all that I have, Father, I give it to you, Lord. Father, in praise and worship, we worship you, Lord. We praise you. We thank you, Father, that you sent your only begotten Son. Father, touch each one here, Lord, as we praise you and as we give you glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen.
Getting to turn this on and off. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Yeah, Drew, can you come help, please? Hallelujah. You can be seated for a minute. How many, how many here can connect with praise and worship? Okay, whether well it's worship, which is which is there in a, a solemn and a quiet tone to bring you to a place, or it's praise and rejoicing and giving God the glory, amen? Just singing and praising Him, amen? As we give to God, as we, as we give as God calls us to give by His Word, we don't do it for ourselves. We don't do it for any pat on the back. We do it because His Word has called us to do it. Amen? I don't have to justify I don't have to answer to anybody in this room. I just know that God's word says to me to give, and I give. That's all I care about, my connection with God. So I pray that you feel the same way as I do. I ask God, Father, bless each one as they give today. We thank you, Lord, that you said in your word, Father, you will bless us, that you have blessed us, and that you continue to bless us as we follow your word and as we're obedient. Father, thank you, and we thank you for your anointing today. In Jesus' name, amen. church takes on a responsibility that sometimes is overwhelming because you look out into the congregation and you know the people that are hurting you know the people that are struggling you know the people that might not be here for one reason or another and it, sometimes you just got to wonder sometimes you know I know my commitment I know Terry's commitment and Debbie's commitment to be here every time the doors are open and to praise and to worship and just to, just give it all but other people don't feel the same way. I pray they get they get that sense of urgency. That's what God said to me this morning. Where's the sense of urgency? The sense of urgency to follow God, to commit to Him, to go forward in, in complete acceptance of what He says and does. Amen. As I was preparing this message, God showed me, He said, said, I go to prepare. I go to prepare. And then I was thinking as God turned it around and he says, have you prepared? I said, well, what do you mean, Lord? He said, well, I go to prepare for you. I go to heaven. I go to prepare for you a mansion in heaven. I go to prepare for you the, the blessings, the anointing, and the love of God that, that he so poured out upon me when I got saved. And then he asked me, have I prepared? And I think as we took communion this morning, part of that says, have you examined yourself and your walk in Christ? Amen. 
That's preparing. What is your commitment to Jesus? Amen. This is, we're only here temporarily. I've, uh, you know, I know some people that have lived to 93, 94, 95 years old. But that's a short period of time in God because one day is a thousand days. Right. Amen. Amen. So that little hundred years that we're here, say God has sent us into a service of serving him. What is our service? Our service is to reach those that are lost. Amen. Which they're, we're to bring the gospel, the good news, and the love of Christ to each and every one that we come in contact with. So prepare. I go to prepare. Say, God, I thank you, Father, that you have gone before me and us to prepare. Yes. I thank you, Lord, that one day the eastern sky will split, the trumpet will sound, and you will come to take your children home, dead in Christ first, and those that are alive in Christ will meet in the air. I thank you for that, Lord. I thank you and I praise you for that, Lord. I, I, I pray that I have that, that sense of urgency that if I don't do something today, somebody may go to hell. Yeah. If you don't do something today, somebody might go to hell. Amen. Do you want that blood on your hands? I don't want that blood on my hands. Right. I might go to a restaurant today and that lady who's waiting on me, that guy who's waiting on me, may be struggling. They might be at the edge, that point, to where if I said something to them about Christ, it would change their life. <laughs> Amen? Right. Can you be of service to God in that manner? Or are you struggling? Are you stuck? Amen? I, I, I don't want you to be struggling or stuck. I want you to be following and listening to what God is saying and doing. So I go to prepare. Let's stand for the reading of the word. So John chapter 14, verses 1 through 15. Father, I thank you for your word, Lord. Father, I don't want, I don't want this word to come from my mouth as my words. I want it to come forth as your words, Lord. Father anointed and Father set forth that should be chiseled on our mind and heart. And Lord, I thank you, Father, that you prepare for us. Father, here's your word, Lord. John 14, starting at verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, Hallelujah. that where I am, there ye may be also. Amen. Father, thank you for your word. Father, let just those three verses, Father, sink into our mind and heart. Father, that we will understand, Father, I pray for wisdom and understanding from heaven for each and every one of us. Lord, thank you for your blessing and thank you for your word. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. amen. You may be seated. You know, there's such a thing as, as being self-confident. I don't think we can ever be self-confident. And, and uh, the key word is self. There is no self if you're serving Jesus. There is only Jesus. There is only God. So there is... We have confidence, but we have confidence in our Savior. We have confidence in the one who died for us on the cross. We have confidence in the one that has sent forth his spirit to fill us, to lead us, to guide us, to empower us. Amen? And if we're not listening to the leading of the Holy Spirit, then we're not serving God. Amen. Right. Amen. And, he, and it suffices to say, as you look around the church, and I'm, I'm, I'm speaking church in general, whether it be Pentecostal, Baptist, Catholic, whatever it may be, and in how many are truly serving God? Amen. Or are they serving themselves? Amen? Okay. Oh, I come to church to get a pat on the back. Or, oh, I come to church to have a great meal sometime. You know? Right. Mm -hmm. you know, or do I come to church, no matter what happens amongst the body, do I come to church because I'm with Jesus? I want, Amen. I want to be closer. Amen? God says in John 14, it says, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. Let not your heart be troubled. Yes. I can I can go around my church and pick up people that are troubled. Amen. They are. Yep. They're troubled. They they they've got some kind of fear. They've got some kind of anxiety. They're they're fearful of losing their job or losing their house. They're fearful of getting COVID. You know. And and God says in His Word, let not your heart be troubled. Amen. Amen. 
And, and I was thinking of this the other day as my boss was yelling at me on the phone. <laughs> and, and I said, okay. You know, and then part of me wanted to say something that I didn't say because I know I didn't want to lose my job. <laughs> but, you know, in my spirit it said, don't worry about it. There's no fear there. If he lets you go, I'll provide another opportunity for you. I'll lead you in another direction. Amen. Amen. So let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Jesus is trying to get the point across to his disciples who their focus has been on God because we have God the Father. Amen. Amen. But Jesus is trying to, to show them that if they've seen God the Father, they've seen Jesus. If they've seen Jesus, they've seen God the Father. Yeah. Amen. Yes. We love the we love the ability of the Trinity. We have the Trinity, right? God the Father. We have Jesus Christ, His Son, and we have the the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost. But the whole focus brings us back to Jesus. Amen. Yes. There's more scriptures in there that focus on Jesus than on God the Father, because it brings us back to Jesus. Amen. Amen. And then we have Jesus who brings us the Holy Spirit, right? God the Father sends his own his Holy Spirit to dwell with us and in us. Amen. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Anyone in here think that Jesus lies? No. I, I think sometimes when I look around and I talk to people that I, I think they don't believe in the Word of God. Because they question. Didn't Jesus say that? Right. Well, if Jesus said it and you're questioning it, then you believe he's not telling the truth. Amen. Right. Right. Well, that's a sin. Yes. Right. Amen. Nobody wants to admit they sin. Yep. But yet it's a sin. Amen. Yep. If you believe in the word of God from Genesis to Revelation, you believe in the infilling of the Holy Spirit. You believe Jesus died on the cross, that he was put in the tomb for three days, that, that he arose, he went into the pits of hell and took the keys of death. And then he ascended to sit at the right hand of the Father. Yes, then why do you question the Word of God? Amen. The Word of God is God, isn't it? Yes, yeah. Amen. He brought it forth through the inspiration and the spiritual infilling of power to those that wrote it down. Yes, yeah. Amen. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Amen. Are you, are you in that category and you're thinking about that? You know, I'm, think, I'm thinking about that, that mansion or that place that God has created for me. Because it's very individualized here. Doesn't it say that? Right. I go to prepare a place for you. Yeah. Amen. He's talking to somebody. Right. right? We know that he's talking to his disciples. But he's talking to you because you're his disciples as well. Amen. Amen. If you're, you're born again and you've asked God to forgive you of your sins and, and you're doing what he tells you to do, then you're a disciple. Right. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I go to prepare a place for you. I thank the Lord that he's gone to prepare a place for me. Yes. Yes. So do I want one bedroom? Do I want three bedrooms? You know, am I going to have guests over and I need a big dining room? You know, you know, I know those are all trivial things, man, man-made thoughts. Right? I don't know what God has prepared, but to me, mansion is mansion. Right. Amen. Amen. And then, right. uh, you know, mansion is not my two-bedroom house in Cedar Lake. In my father's house are many mansions. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, the ye may be also. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And if I go and prepare, which he just said he was going to prepare a place for us, right? I will come again. Amen. We all know that on that day when the the trumpet sounds and the sky splits and he's coming. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Are your eyes looking to heaven? Are you looking for that day? Are you the watchman on the wall? Are you, are you there to serve and to go? I'm ready, God. Here I am. Here I am. Take me. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. How many people think that when they go to heaven that they're going to be sitting on a cloud playing the harp for the rest of their life? That is not how God works. Right. Right. He's taking you home for a reason. Right. He's taking us all home for a reason. Amen. Right. And that's to serve Him. Yes. Right. To serve Him. And receive you unto myself. I, I picture the day as, I, as I'm in prayer and as I'm prostrate before the Lord. I picture the day when I look up 
and God is standing in front of me. The, the, the light, the light is so bright and so beautiful and so wonderful, and I feel such a peace that just overwhelms me from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet. That as I look up to look on God, I gotta put my head down because I, I just don't understand. God, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. But yet he says, I'll be there with you, amen? amen. You'll be surrounding that table. You'll be casting your crowns upon that, on that table to give back to God. Say, here, God, you take you take it. You deserve it, Jesus. You amen. deserve it, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Because I love you, because I praise you, because uh, I just thank you, Lord, that I'm here in your midst. That where I am, there ye may be also. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. We, Amen. We, kind of, we kind of joke about it or share about it. If Jesus were to come back this very moment, how many of us would still be left in this room? Right. I'll pray that none of us would be left in this yes. room. I pray that this room would be empty. Amen. Right. Amen. But it's something to think about, isn't it? Amen. Said, are you ready? We come back to the ready part. Have you prepared yourself? Have you done a, a spiritual examination of your walk in Christ? Do you hold unforgiveness towards anybody? Amen. Are you living in sin? I, I know people that choose to live in sin. Yes. But they come to church anyway. Yep. Yes. Amen. I pray someday they'll they'll get the hint, they'll Amen. get the idea that that ain't right. right. That ain't right. That's right. I, I know I'm going here and there, but I'm just going somewhere. <laughs> I go and prepare. I go and prepare. And whether I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Amen. Right. So thank God that we have from Genesis to Revelations, we have God's word and we know the ending. Right. Don't we? Amen. Amen. Thank you. Remember, he's preaching to the disciples and the disciples don't know the ending. Right. Amen. So thank the Lord. Amen. If, if anything, we should be giving him glory and yes. praise that we right. know the beginning and we know the end. Right. He is the Alpha and he is the Omega. He is the yes. beginning and the right. end. Thank we know that every knee Lord. shall bow, every yes. tongue shall confess that Jesus is the Lord. We know that He is the power, that He is the anointing, and He sent the Spirit of God to dwell in us, to lead us and guide us, amen? We know that the enemy has no power over us because we believe in the risen Savior. Amen? And whether I go, you know, in the way, you know. Thank the Lord that I got the manual. Yes, right. Praise you in an eight in Japanese. Hallelujah. I thank the Lord that I know how to put the pieces together and I don't have any leftovers at the end. Amen. 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 We've all built something with, huh, I got three extra screws. I don't know where they came from. Right. Amen. God doesn't do that to us. Right. He's given us the complete picture. He's given us the complete manual. Right. And when we get to the right. end, when that sky opens up and we see him on that chariot coming and the sound of the trumpet. Yes. He's not coming to put together little pieces. He's coming because yes. we're already together. Yes. Amen. 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 We are already together. Thomas said unto the Lord, we know not whither thou goest. And how can we know the way? This is for everybody that hasn't accepted Jesus Christ. This is for everybody that has walked away from Jesus Christ. This is for everybody that has doubt that Jesus is our Savior. Amen. Thomas, he's one of the disciples. Right. Yeah. He's saying, Thomas saith unto them, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? As I said earlier, we know the beginning and the end. Thomas didn't know the beginning and the end. Thomas only knew that in the moment he was with Jesus, and Jesus was saying, I'm going somewhere. And Jesus didn't give him the road map, didn't give him the GPS to show him where they were going. Right. He just told him, I'm going. Amen. 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 But in the spirit... Thomas should have discerned, right? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way. I am the way. Amen. It's a way. I'm going to keep on coming back to Jesus because so many people have lost the way. Amen. Amen. They've stepped off the path. Haven't they? They've stepped off the path. So they believe in God, but do they believe that Jesus died for them on the cross? Amen. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I, I think, you know, I've, I've been in the oneness Thank church. You know, we all know Thank the oneness Jesus. church, right? They only believe in Jesus Christ, and that's it. There's nothing else, right? Yes. And then I've been, you know, man, I'm in my church. We believe in the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. But it all comes back to Jesus if you know the Word of God. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 So are they wrong or am I wrong? Yes. I don't think either one of us is wrong. Right. But I but I think there's a doctrine, there's a belief, there's an understanding that they've taken and they're not taken. Yeah. I believe that 
how can you go there and say Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and then say there's only Jesus, but yet without the Holy Spirit, you can't go to heaven. Right. There's some denomination believe that, right? They believe that without the Holy Spirit. But if you have the Holy Spirit, but you only believe in Jesus, and, you know, and I'm not trying to make a case for them or against them. I'm just saying. Okay? I told you I'm going everywhere. Nice <laughs> Jesus saith unto him, I am the way. Amen. Come on. I love that. Say, he is the great I am. Amen. Who do I tell them you are? I am. Amen. Amen. I am. Amen. Amen. God said to us, he says, I want you to go and do this. I want you to be my evangelist. I want you to be my disciple. I want you to go into the highways and byways and compel them to come. Hallelujah. I want you to pray for the sick and let them be healed. I want you to pray for those that are demon possessed and they'll be set free in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I give you the power. I give you the yeah. power to go forth and do all of this Amen. by the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. And by the word of God being chiseled on your mind and heart, that word will continue to reverberate and come out yes. to touch those you're talking to. Yes. Amen. 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 Jesus said to him, I am the way. Yes. I am the way. Yes. We got to get off the fact that my name is Richard Jarrett and I was born in Massachusetts and, and, and I do this and I do that and I go here and I go there. I, I got to get rid of that. I got to say, no, I am a servant and I am connected to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And wherever he took me from, to where he's brought me to, to where he's going to bring me, I am Amen. still a servant of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 And yes, I have my own individuality, but I don't want that to show. I want Jesus to show. Amen. I want Jesus to show. I am the way. If you had known me, what a question, huh? If you had known me, you should have known my Father also. And from henceforth you know him and have seen him. If you had known me, yes. you ever have a conversation with, with another Christian and in your mind you're saying, do they actually know Jesus? Right. Oh, yeah. Because the, the, the conversation just leads you to believe there's something missing here. Right. There's something missing here. You know, it, it, I, you know, I just, I cry out, I cry, I cry tears, I cry pain and suffering, I cry because there's so many people that call themselves Christians, and we know that, what does it say, 60% of the United States are Christians, but yet when you talk to them, you just have to wonder, That's right. Right. That's right. are they reading the same Bible as me, right. are they praying to the same God as me, right. amen, we need to pray for our country, yes, amen, Lord. and everybody in it. Yes. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Amen. 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 I, I don't understand the disciples because they seen so many miracles, didn't they? Right. So Jesus did so That's much. Right. He raised the dead. He 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 did so much. But yet every single time, within a couple of days after he's done a miracle, they're asking him a question where if they had the true faith that I have faith. They would say, well, don't ask him that question because we seen what he did just a few minutes ago. Right. Yeah. Amen. Phil saith unto the Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him, I have been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip. Right. Right? And did God ever ask you that question? Amen. You get cancer or you lose your job or financially things are going crazy or relationship-wise the things are going crazy and all of a sudden you're on your knees and you're asking God why, 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 why. And then God is saying, you know, in this verse, said, Philip, how come you don't know this? Amen. He said that we will go through trials and tribulations. Right. Right. Amen. He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Show us the Father. Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? In the words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. Amen? Amen. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. He doeth the works. Hallelujah. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works sake. Amen? You like how Jesus kind of turns that around? He says, okay, if you can't believe in me or you can't believe in the Father, 
then believe in the miracles and the things that I've just done. Yeah. Amen? The works. What have you seen me do? Did I not raise the dead? Did I not heal the blind man? Did I not heal the lepers? Did I not do all of these wonderful things? Did I not cast out the devils? That's right. Believe me for my work's sake. If you can't believe I am him, then right. believe me for what I've done. Yes. Yes. Amen. Believe me for what I've done. And I, and I love that because that's the same focus of the week. God says, I you will know them by their fruit. Yes. Do you have any fruit? Amen. 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 Fruit, fruit is a connection of faith and works. Yes. Right. Faith and works. Yes. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. <coughs> verily, verily, amen. I love when Jesus repeats himself. Verily, verily, he's trying to get a point across. He's trying to get you to pay attention because he's had to say it twice. Right. right? Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. That he do also. And then does that do anything to you? Do you think about that? And say, well, Jesus said that I should be doing what he did when he was here. Amen. That he gave me the authority, right. he gave me the power, right. that the enemy has been bound and cast into the, the, into the hell, into the sea of Amen. forgetfulness, and that he's forgiven me of my sins and empowered me by filling me with the Spirit of God. That I do, he, sh uh, he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Yeah. Amen. Right. And amazing that he says to the disciples, listen to me. If I don't go to the Father, you won't have the power and the authority, Amen. and you won't do the works that I did if I don't go. Yes. Right. Amen? Praise the Lord. 2022. Jesus has gone to be with the Father. He's sitting at the right hand of the Father. He sent the comfort of the Holy Amen. Spirit to dwell in you, with you, yes. and for you. Come on. Therefore, we should be doing... As Jesus told his disciples. Yes. Amen. That's right. But how many times do we see it happening? Amen? Amen. You know, thank God for Grace Pentecostal. As they come together, they come together in, 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 a, in an anointing and a covering of prayer. Yes. Amen. To where it's not so much the service, it's the connection. Yes. Amen. 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 In Gospel Lighthouse, we're in the same position. We need to have that connection. We need to have that relationship with Jesus Christ and not worry about the program. Come on. Right. Amen. Come on, I'm not worried about did, it, did I do the offering at the right time? Did I do Amen. the communion at the right, right. time? Right. Did I wear the right clothes? Did I accept Amen. the right people? Amen. No. I come to have the relationship with Jesus yeah, Christ. Right. Amen. And it says it right here, right? He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. Yes. Amen. Whether I'm in these four walls or whether I'm standing on the street corner somewhere, I've been called. Amen. I've been chosen. I've been called. He knew me in my mother's womb. Amen. amen. Predestination, right? Predestined. Amen. God knows where you were. He definitely knows where you're going to go. Right. Right? So what's it up to us? Because he gives us our own free will. So I can choose not to follow Jesus. Yes. Or I can give it all to Jesus. Yes. Be transformed, renewed, revived, and empowered That's right. to do as it says here. Said, I do shall he do also in greater works. Wow. Amen. Greater works yes. than these. So when I pray for somebody and believe that God healed them and set them free and delivered them, I believe it. And God said that he will answer our prayers. Amen. Amen. If we're in the right mindset, if we're in the right will, are we following Jesus completely? Come on. Amen. Right. They shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. Hallelujah, yes. hallelujah. Yes. The Father may be glorified in the Son. Amen. Jesus will be glorified in what you do. Amen. Amen. God the Father will be glorified in what you do. As you step out of that boat and walk on the water, when you go over to pray for somebody that you normally wouldn't go over and pray for, you go over and pray for them and you see God moving to heal them, to deliver them, to set them free. Amen. That's what God wants you to do. And me. Amen. wants us to step out of our comfort zone and do what he's called us to do. Yes. Because it says it right here. Do you believe in God? Do you believe in the Word of God? If you believe in the Word of God, you believe in Jesus Christ, 
then look what he says. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Bless him, Lord. I've never seen anybody raised from the dead in my spiritual walk with Christ. But I know it happens. Yes. Yes. I know it happens at the power of God. Amen. I've seen people touched by God and healed of cancer. Yes. Amen. I've seen Amen. it. I've witnessed it. That's right. I've seen God take this person from being dead in sin, yes. dying to self, self-involved, take Amen. me from that place of yes. death and raise Amen. me to a living yes. Lord and save me. Hallelujah. Father, may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. But please pay attention to the first 10 verses, okay? Because you got to be in that place of total commitment, total submission, that connection to God, which is a relationship with Jesus Christ. Not a religion, a relationship with Jesus Christ. Before this is going to happen. Yes, amen. That if you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Amen. Hallelujah. You, Believing in faith, walking on the water, knowing that God is there to heal, to deliver, to set yes. free, amen. to yes. renew, and to revive. Yes. We pray for a revival. Revival starts in you. Yes. Amen. amen. Revival starts in each and every one of us there. When they got together at Azuzo Street, they didn't get together with 400 people and say, we're going to have revival today. Yes. Right. It started in their heart. Yes. Amen. It started in their heart. And that's where we are as a church. Amen. Amen. And we 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 are here as a church, and the church is such a such a generalized term. If you could start picturing that you are the church, it would change your walk. Amen. Because you are the church. Right. Amen. So Pastor Terry may be able to do wonderful things in the spirit, but if we're the church, we are also able to walk in that anointing. Amen. Amen. Right. But you've got to be the church. You've got to be connected to Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen. You've got to be there. Amen. Amen. If you love me, keep my commandments. Isn't it so wonderful that God starts off by telling his disciples, if you believe in the Father, you believe in me. If you believe in me, you believe in the Father. That nobody can go to heaven or go, go to the Father except they believe in Jesus Christ. Amen. Right. And he goes all the way through everything and he says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Amen. Amen. Brings us back to don't be living in sin. Mm -hmm. Amen. Okay. Everyone in here knows the Ten Commandments. Amen. Right. But there's more to it than that. Right. Right. The, the, the Ten Commandments can be in your mind. I know it book knowledge wise. But do I know it in my heart enough to know when not to do it? Right. Amen. Amen. That conviction. Right. I call it conviction. It's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is tweaking you or touching you or, or maybe even cattle prodding you. Don't do that. Right. Don't Amen. do that. Right. If you love me, keep my commandments. Hallelujah. As I as I kind of wind down the message in Revelations 21, 1 to 3, it, it kind of brings us, right? We talked about the beginning and the end. Well, this is the end, right? Revelations 21, starting in verse 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I pray that I'm already home with the Lord at that time. Okay? But it says, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. We know that the earth is going to be cleansed by fire. It says that in Revelations. It says that in the Word of God. It says that God is going to purify and cleanse the earth. Amen? Thank God that we're already going to be home then, right? And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Prepared for Amen. a bride Hallelujah. adorned by for her husband. Thank you, Jesus. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. Jesus is with men. Amen. 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 The tabernacle of God is with men. And he will dwell with them. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. That as I'm kneeling before the throne, as I'm sitting around that table, as, a, as I'm there in heaven with my brothers and sisters, that I'm there with Jesus. That I'm there with Jesus. Yeah. And they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them. Oh, hallelujah. And be their God. Yes. Oh. And be their God. Thank you, Jesus. You serve, you serve the same Jesus I know that rose from the dead. Yes, thank 
Amen. You serve the same Jesus I know that took the keys of death from the enemy and defeated the enemy? Do you serve the same Jesus I know that the, the demons and Satan quake and quiver when the name of Jesus is mentioned? Amen. Amen. Do you serve the same Jesus that I know that, that anointed you, that set you free, that delivered you, that set you up on your feet and said, go into the highways and byways. Go and proclaim the gospel and the good news to those around you. Do you serve the same Jesus? Amen. Hallelujah. I serve that Jesus. I serve a Jesus that when I'm when I'm afraid and when I'm down, I know I can call out to Jesus and he's going to help me. Amen. Amen. I know the same Jesus that if I got sick or if I had terminal illness or whatever it is, that I can cry out to Jesus and he'll be there for me. He'll be there with me. Amen. He'll walk with me. He'll keep me safe. I know that Jesus. I know that this is the time, everyone. This is the time. This is this is where God is, is is stirring the spirit of God. He's stirring the spirit of God in the church or in us. Yes. He's stirring the spirit of God throughout the world right. and saying, "I'm coming. Right. I'm coming. Are you ready? Are you ready?" So as we end in prayer, I want everybody to focus on that. So that are you ready? So have you done the self examination and and you're 100 percent sure that I am with Christ? Amen. I've been forgiven my sins and I am with Christ. And now you're the evangelist because we're all evangelists. Right. Yeah. To reach our family, to reach our co-workers, to reach the man on the street, to reach people with the gospel and good news. And are you willing to let go of yourself? I think that's the hardest point for everybody here. Yeah. We all got a name. We all got a place. We all know, you know, say, my name is Richard. Here I am. But am I willing to let go of me and let Jesus take over? And let Jesus take over. Amen. That's where we all need to be. Amen. Yes. Amen. So as we as we think about this message, think about God has gone to prepare a place for you. Said, are you prepared to receive it? Come on. Amen. Are you prepared to receive it? That Amen. I guess that's the final question. Amen. Are you prepared to receive it? Amen. So let's let's pray and let's ask God. I said, thank God that I'm prepared. I thank God that. He has touched me. I thank God for the infilling of the Holy Spirit. I, I thank God for His Word from Genesis to Revelations. I thank God that the new Jerusalem, Father, will descend from heaven. I thank God that you purify and cleanse the earth. I thank God, Father, that you, Father, cast out sin, Father. It says in your Word that He is faithful and just to forgive me of all my sins and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. And Lord, I thank God that I'm prepared. Father, I pray for each and every one here and those that are watching on Facebook. No matter what we're dealing with, Jesus, you're here. Amen. No matter where we are, Jesus, you're there. Father, no matter what's going on, Lord, you, Jesus, you've already set us free. Father, thank you, Lord, that we are prepared. Father, each and every one here has a relationship with Jesus Christ. And Father, that we're prepared to turn it all over to you and let your light shine and not our light. Father, thank you for your blessing and your anointing upon each and every one that is here. We give you praise and glory. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 God bless everyone. Everyone, please come back to our Pastor Terry's church tonight, Grace Pentecostal. Come back and worship and pray. Hallelujah. God bless everyone.